What's up guys, welcome to Reseller Car Talk. I have a very interesting topic for you guys today. I think the landscape of reselling is actually changing because the customer is changing. So as you guys know, retail has been doing very bad for many years in a row. People are spending a lot less money on stuff and they're spending a lot more money on experience. So it's almost like the better story is more valuable than the actual item, which is making me wonder a lot of things. Right now, maybe the best way to sell something is influencer marketing. So if you find somebody who's really popular and you give them an item and it actually matches their lifestyle, you're gonna sell a ton of those items. Everybody knows that and that's sort of like where everything is moving. You're seeing people get paid up to $10 million for one Instagram post because their influence is that magical. They say this lipstick is amazing, everybody buys that lipstick. It's just that direct. And the main thing is they can buy that lipstick anywhere. They can get it at Walgreens for $2. How come they're spending $12 from an online influencer? And I think that because experience is huge, you can see it affecting how resale happens because common items that don't have a story are pretty much not selling at all. Let me give you another example. In order to actually sell a just a regular item, it's got to be kind of like under $10 free shipping. If it's special, it can go for any kind of price, but I think that the days of selling regular stuff are gone just because of the companies like Temu, Shein, Amazon are making things so cheap and so accessible and so fast that people are sort of programmed that if it's new or generic, they want it for basically free. Now, I was just looking at why Temu is so successful and it's kind of interesting because a lot of the people buying on the platform are bored. It's showing that the number one reason people shop on Temu is to pass the time. I'm finding the exact same thing on whatnot. People are just shopping for fun. It's become their new entertainment. And I found that under $30, people are just buying for fun, for sport. They're not really even looking for something that they need. They can just spend $30 on something like going to a movie or going at the dinner. And since so many people are on their phone all day, I kind of want to be in that market in the future of just like random, thoughtless things selling. I think that I'm going to be in that category right now on whatnot. And if I were selling things on eBay or Amazon or Mercari or Poshmark, I would be aiming more towards the higher end items that people are actually searching for. If you're going for volume, I think you need very, very, very cheap or very, very, very trendy. I was always saying like on Temu, if you look at what's trending and what's popular, it's always like whatever keywords people are looking for. Like right now, anything with a llama on it, anything with a pineapple on it, these are trending like crazy. There are, especially now that I'm a parent and I'm reading all these, these books to my kids, the Curious George series, right? They've really milked this thing. There's like six or 7,000 books. And then one of them, Curious George, like he has a dinosaur that's broken and it's not really broken and they go to the store and get batteries and go home and put the batteries back in the dinosaur and it works. That is like the worst possible story, but because it has the right keywords and the book was like $2.99 free shipping, that's just people randomly buying stuff because it's cheap. That's why I think right now, this is going to sound really wild, but it makes sense to me why promoted listings is so important. Because if you just have a regular regular item, people really need to see it in order to buy it because they're not, they're not searching for anything. They just go online and type in a couple of random keywords and they're just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. They see something interesting, they actually buy it. And on the eBay listing, you're seeing four promoted listings on the same listing, which is really wild. That means eBay is really raking in that promoted listings money. And so if you just have a regular item, it might be just promoting it to the max. Now, Temu, I think they purchased either three or four Super Bowl commercials this year in 2024. That's wild. If you look on their website, everything is like $10 free shipping. But I think that's it. People are so bored that they're just shopping on Temu. And I was looking, the average person spends $300 a month on that app. They don't even know what they're buying. They don't know when it's coming. And if you look at the reviews of the items, I bought a few things on Temu. The quality is horrible. It might not work. I bought a, tail, a toilet paper holder from my employee bathroom. It didn't stick even the very first time. It was like the worst glue ever. It didn't work. I just threw it away because like it's not worth it going to Whole Foods to drop it off to send it back. And yet I'm still on the app randomly looking for things. I think that's sort of the the culture of America. I'm on there looking for like a cheap um, 
solution to something and it's this always poor quality always takes multiple weeks to ship and as you guys know i learned that temu and Shein, all their warehouses are in mexico so they can send items in the united states under the 800 dollars threshold for uh, tariffs so like they have warehouses in tijuana they drive across the border and drop them off in san diego and they use the u.s post office um to ship out all of their items, but the, all of their items are under, un, or they're, they're really cheap, they're taking advantage of first class mail, and also they're not paying tariffs. So for a normal US person importing stuff in, they're paying 30% on their goods as soon as they get it before they resell it. Temu and Shein are skipping this step, and they're really focusing on essentially cheap garbage. So right now, I think that the story matters so much. If you buy a jacket and you put in the description that it's something your grandma gave you and you wore it all the way through high school and you proposed to a girl and she cheated on you with your best friend and that's in there, somebody might buy that jacket so, so they can have that story. But if you don't have that story, you better pay 20% promoted listings or your item is never gonna show up. I don't know if you guys are having the same experience, but like, I think experience is way more important than the item. I think I just fall right in that demographic. I like buy a car for either the pure utility. I have a minivan right now where I love it because the automatic doors, seven seater, I have two kids, cargo. I have a business, so I love lugging goods and supplies in this thing. Does exactly what I want to do, but I was totally happy to pay $500 for some sport wheels. Cause like, I want that experience of walking up to my car and being like, okay, like I'm a dad, but at least I have black wheels, right? That experience is worth the extra money. And I think that if I could re-choose businesses, I mean, obviously hindsight is 2020, but I'd rather go back and sell experiences right now because from the pandemic till now, everybody has been craving these experiences. They want to go out and do stuff. They don't need a nice car or a nice watch. They want to go to Tahiti or the Bahamas or on a trip with their friends. Coachella, this is also interesting. They actually, they, they gave me a cease and desist. I gave away Coachella tickets on my whatnot stream and they said I cannot use their name to earn money. I thought that was crazy. That means Coachella must be making a ton of money because they've got bored lawyers just sending out cease and desist. How could me giving away tickets to Coachella hurt their brand? Are you serious? Like, is that worth it? Um, but I understand what they're saying. They're, they're saying that I use the Coachella name to boost my own name. And that is true. And that's what I was doing. So right when I got that letter, I took it down. But it totally makes sense on every all around. For me, it makes sense to capitalize on something that's trending. As you guys know, I gave away Super Bowl tickets. I gave away Coachella tickets. I gave away a Peloton. Right now, I'm giving away MacBooks on my stream, iPads. I'm giving away money. I'm doing things that are trending and people are looking for to try to get as many people into my stream as possible to just sell regular items, essentially. Right? To sell regular items, you need a ton of promotion. And I think this is why like, there's so much news going on right now in the reselling world. Like Dollar Trees are closing everywhere. And I think that they just can't afford the marketing and they can't move enough volume and there's too much shoplifting. So the shrinkage is probably like 10, 20% now in those dollar stores. People are just shoplifting like crazy. Hard to find good workers that'll actually work for $17 an hour in that kind of a miserable environment. And then people are not spending on cheap stuff on in person. They're doing it online now. So I would much rather sit at home in bed and shop on, on Shein than go to the physical store and buy something from H&M. I think fast fashion is gonna move mostly online. So right now, I'm kind of blown away by the experience, experiential nature of buying things as I feel like that's everything. And I'm moving more and more that way because I actually think it's a better experience. I'm buying something for the experience. I'm actually happier than just buying it for the actual features. So it's both. I love this minivan because of the features. I also love the black wheels because of the way, because of the way it looks when I'm walking up to it. Um, and also, when I'm looking for it, because I'm gonna buy a car this year. I'm turning 40 years old, I'm gonna get something, and the number one thing I care about is just how the car sounds. I wanna sit in the car and enjoy it on the way home, and I don't care about anybody else, and I just think that experience is everything. I'm willing to pay a good amount of money for it to sound and make me feel a certain way, right? And 
I think we're actually moving more towards people not caring what other people think. And I think that <clears throat> this is a very positive thing for all of us, especially as resellers, because like people are just buying things for fun. They don't care what other people think, right? They're buying things they want. Don't care what other people think. So you as the reseller need to be providing those types of items to people. I think experience is king. Right now, I talk about escape rooms a lot. I think I'd rather own an escape room or one of those kiddie trains that drives in a circle and charges $4. I, I've been doing that because my daughter is obsessed with trains. So we drive over there and I pay $4 for 20 minutes. And I think that is super duper worth it. But there's a dude that's just pressing a button over and over again and collecting two hundred dollars every time this thing goes in a circle that's probably a lot easier than what we're doing as a reseller because it's an experience so i think the next 10 20 30 years if you're betting on experiences being a bigger part of your portfolio more profitable thing that you can do i'd bet you are right so i know those people who are renting lamborghinis and jets the people who are influencers are making 20 to 100 grand a month just renting out the people who want the experience of getting onto an airplane and taking pictures for their Instagram following. People want followers for their birthday. I think we're living in a very different world right now and experience is king and I'm all in on experience. I think that it's a huge thing. It's gonna be something that I wanna work on in the future. So appreciate that. Appreciate you guys. Hopefully that was useful. Until next time, make progress daily.